Ready? Hi, Gordon with another edition of the Unscripted series. And this week I'm going to talk about sourcing wood. Uh, I think it is our the most important thing perhaps that we do. The wood has the biggest determinant other than us and building and the design, but the biggest outside determinant in the final outcome of the ukulele. And as you can see in the shop, Char's gonna pan around, we keep our wood stored up above, and we haven't counted how much wood we have here, but we've estimated, and we think we have between 2,000 and 3,000 ukuleles worth of wood. And after she's done scanning all of it, <laughs> I'll talk about why. So when we come across great wood, we just want to accumulate it. It's never going to go down in value, we don't think. And, you know, we just want to have that and to hold it and be able to use it at some future time. We have had people ask in the past, well, can I supply my own wood? And um, it's not something that we do. And the reason is that the quality of this wood, how it was cut, how it was kept from the time that it came out of the tree, um, how it was selected off that tree, is it vertical grain or not, all these are really important considerations for and, and determinants of the final quality of the wood. Uh, I know when I used to build guitars and I was only building a few every year, I would go on eBay and you'd find these wood sets. But, you know, I'd really say if you're building don't do that. And the reason is you've got no idea where that wood came from, how it was held, how many hands it went through, how it's been, been stored, whether or not it's cut right, whether or not it's even the size that they say. I mean, people will measure and they'll say, oh, it's four and seven eighths. And you find out, well, it's not just quite four and seven eighths, it's almost four and seven eighths. We have very exact dimensions that we need. So when we get wood from our suppliers, sometimes we get it in billets. And a billet would be a thick, like a one inch piece, and we can resaw it into these different components. But most of the time, we get our wood from our suppliers and it's already cut uh, roughly as we want it. Here's a set, and there's two sides. These are all consecutive slices, but two sides. And then we've got the two pieces for the top and the two pieces uh, for the back. We work with uh, three, uh, maybe four main suppliers. And it's one of the things that, uh, I, you could probably find out who they are, but we don't disclose that information. We like to work with them and we like value our relationship with those people. And we have, have uh, matured that relationship over the entire time of Mayamoe. Early on, we bought wood from a number of different people, but we'd find out that there is a difference in the quality. You know, we'd come in from some people and be perfect like, like this wood, and other people, maybe it wouldn't be quite vertical grain, or quite as close to vertical grain as we'd like, or maybe the sizes were off, or maybe they, they gave it to us and some of the pieces were thicker than others, and it made the work on the overhead sander more time consuming and more difficult. I remember one guy we got wood from and boy, we loved the pictures and we loved the name of the company. It all sounded really good. We got in the wood and we opened it up and it all warped within a day. It had been cut when it was too wet. It had not been stored properly. And boy, once it's done that, it is nearly impossible, especially with highly figured wood, to correct for it. So. We want to work with suppliers that are as close to the forest as possible. We don't want people, you know, a lot of middle people dealing with the wood and handling it in different ways. Ideally, we want someone that is actually going out into the forest, they're cutting the wood, they're seeing it, they're cutting it, they're storing it, and then when it's dry and it's ready, they're resawing it into the pieces that we need and letting us know. Uh, and those are the type of people that, you know, they tend to treat us the way we like to treat you, which is, you know, if there's something wrong, they want to know about it and they want a chance to, to make it right. So the, uh, as builders, 
I'm just telling you that I think your relationship with your wood suppliers is key and it's something I would really work on nurturing over time. That's the, that's the beginning of the quality of the final instrument. Thanks and I'll see you next week with another edition of the Unscripted series.